So thanks for tuning into this conversation. GMM Fortler is in news for multiple reasons. They came out with a fairly decent set of numbers at quarter one. Uh, we haven't spoken to them post that, but in between our conversation now and the results, there is also a large deal that happened wherein Fortler Inc. sold about 13.56% stake as well, which was lapped up uh, by a couple of fairly interesting prominent names, uh, including Atreides Investments and Infinity Partners, which are funds presumably controlled by Chris Capital, if I'm not wrong. Tarak Patel joins in to talk about all of that and more. Tarak, great having you. Thanks for taking the time out. Neeraj, thanks so much. Tarak, uh, before I get to the fundamental performance, uh, uh, just a word on the shareholding. Uh, there are changes that has happened. There was a large transaction happened a year and a half, two years ago. Then a large transaction happened on Friday as well. Just fill us in with what's the current state of shareholding because you are on record saying that you want to increase your stake as well. Yes, so Neeraj, uh, you might remember 2014, DBAG comes in. Our company at that point in time was about 250 crores of revenue. I think this year we're tracking towards about 500 crores of uh, DBITDA margin, right? So significant change of size and scale. And as of last Friday, DBAG have sold out their entire stake, leaving 1%, which we will acquire from them at 700 rupees as uh, promised in uh, the December 2020. So from our standpoint, DBAG has been a great partner for us, long term, very supportive. And obviously, it's you know one uh, the journey comes to an end and a new one begins. And like you rightly said, Chris Capital has come in with 9.9%. And over the next few months, we will engage with them and kind of hopefully start the next phase of growth. Okay. You are on record saying that you want to increase the stake from where it is right now to a particular level as well, right? Yes. Yeah, so 24.2 is what we currently have as a family. 1% mm -hmm. stake after the acquisition would take us to 25.2 odd. We would cross the 25% mark as well. Uh, and then puts us as the biggest single, uh, the biggest promoter in this company. Okay. Tarak, uh, tell us about the plans now, because as you said, you are a significantly large player. You are the market leader per se, but I'm guessing that with, with this transaction happening, Fodler in its truest sense kind of moves out as well. And please correct me if I'm wrong. So now tell us what's the way ahead for GMM Fodler, not just for FY24, and I'll come to that also, but over the course of the next few years. Yeah, so just to correct you, when you say Fordler moves out, it's not really Fordler that moves out, it's DBAG, the private equity fund that moves out. The Fordler brand name still remains within the group. Uh, as you rightly also said, we are the biggest in the business. We are about $350 million of revenue. The next biggest one is about $200 million. So in terms of size and scale, global presence, we are definitely five, uh, the market leaders. But having said that, obviously, we are diversifying m and you know, acquisitions have been an important part of our growth strategy as well. So we have a couple of things that we are working on, obviously, to kind of build on the good foundation that our glass line business has created, but then add new products, technologies that will help us grow much quicker, especially in some of the Western markets like the Europe and U the US. Could you, could you talk about that? Yeah, sure. So one of the pl platforms that we're trying to build right now is a mixing platform, right? So in India, we have a mixing business that's about 150 odd crores. We acquired a French company very recently with a presence in France and in China. There's about 12 odd million euros of business, and we are close to acquiring a small company in the US. That would kind of put us really a global player. We would rebrand this strategy, come out with a clear go-to-market strategy, have a clear brand name. And mixing very complementary to glass line goes into chemical and pharma, but also opens up new industry segments for us, right? Oil and gas, petrochemical, food and beverages. So really a nice growth play for us. And again, from a market standpoint, not too many competitors. And really, I think that's one area that we can see significant growth that will come in the next few years. Okay. So does this in some way, um, if not insulate you, then diversify from... Uh, maybe the concentration risk of chemicals and pharma, because I think the last 12 months, you would have seen yeah. that risk impacting your numbers. So exactly. I think what we tried to do in the last few years, obviously, when we started up, we were only a glass lining company. We have now added multiple product lines, new technologies that go into chemical and pharma. But absolutely right. We are trying to kind of diversify, take a little bit risk out of being only chemical and pharma focused and be really a much wider industry player. Right. So that's something that we are working on. And like you said, metals and minerals, oil and gas, petrochemicals, again, good growth markets, very large markets, and these new technologies and products will open up these markets for us. Um, 
Tarak, what would the right to wing be into some of these others? Because in chemicals and pharma, glass line equipment, one can understand that you have a clear right to win. The other, yeah. what is the right to win? So again, I think a few things here. One is obviously the brand name of Fordler is quite well known across industry. So we would definitely leverage that. We have a global footprint in terms of aftermarket sales and service. We can get that something that we can offer customers all over the world. We don't have to kind of bring stuff back to India all the time. We can get it repaired and serviced locally. And then lastly, I think some of the acquisitions that we've made already have a strong uh, the presence in these markets, right? So their brand name by themselves would also be kind of opening doors for us. Okay. Okay. Uh, performances you've done. Uh, did you do as per expectation in quarter one, part one of my question? And I think in some of the other interactions, you said that you're probably on track to exceed um, in, a, in a small way the guidance that was given earlier. What, where does the confidence come from considering the fact that chemicals are globally, from what I hear of the commentary from the global chemical majors, still, still seems to be in a bit of a limbo, if you will. So very true. So I think starting off, just talking a little bit about the industry segments, chemical is in a soft spot right now. However, we do expect the next couple of quarters, things should improve. I think things have kind of uh, the bottomed out now. Uh, I think you will see some investments and improvements in the next few quarters. We also expect pharma to come back strong next year. So pharma has been kind of silent for the last few years, but I think there is definitely some positive news in the horizon. I think there will be some investments that will come in. Having said that, I think the positive for us is that we do have a large backlog, so about 2,000 odd crores of backlog already on our books. That gives us maybe six to nine months of visibility. And then again, we've been kind of aggressive in the market, right? Being a market leader is kind of the right of first refusal is always with you. So you can be a little bit more aggressive and still will you know, a lot more of the business as well. Uh, but having said that, I think from a number standpoint, 3,700 crores of revenue and 630 crores of EBITDA margin was what we guided towards 2025. We were already at 3,000 odd crores last year. We we're tracking towards definitely hitting that number much faster than expected. Uh, on the margin front, absolutely right. It has been a bit slow. Uh, there has been a slowdown. But I think because of what we have in the group within the diversity in terms of aftermarket products, technologies, we have a good mix around here that we can definitely look to increase margins as well. Uh, short term, definitely pressure, but I think long term, I think we're in good standing to hit the numbers that we guided towards. Uh, and probably exceed them. So here, here's the other question. Uh, where is it that ca capacities and utilization levels stand currently? And if indeed this pickup in chemicals or pharma next year happens, would you be in a position to be able to service all of those demands and therefore does operating leverage come into play? Yes, so I think from uh, the capacity standpoint, we have capacity available today. We are not running at full capacity. So I would say anywhere between 60 to 75 percent is what we are running at. So definitely, if the demand were to pick up, we have capacity in place. Definitely, uh, we have local manufacturing here in India. We can outsource stuff to India as well. So there's multiple plays that we can kind of do, but there's no real constraint when it comes to capacity, right? So I think the only real capex that we would have to make would be after 2025 maintenance capex and then maybe a little bit more capex but no significant capex at least for the foreseeable future got it uh, okay so all, all all good on the numbers front i just have one final question tarak if you will uh, sure. uh, and that is if if you believe in your wisdom or knowledge any large uh, shareholding related transaction that could be on the anvil over the course of the next six months or is it now kind of steadied out so now I think it's steady, steady state now. I think there was a little bit of uncertainty with the last stake that got sold on Friday. I think people were kind of not sure how and when it would happen, but it's done with now. We have stability. Chris Capital, again, long-term investors, um, you know, have a good track record here in India as well. So I think we just have to put our foot, uh, the heads down now, focus on work and kind of deliver on the numbers over the next few years. Okay. Well, we wish you all the best for that and more, Tarak. Thank you so much for taking the time out and speaking to us today. Thank you, Neeraj. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, and viewers, thanks for tuning into this conversation.